the topic that I want to cover today is about cross-examination, and I think that it will help you uh, regardless of if you're represented or if you're doing this pro se, because when you're being cross-examined, even when you have an attorney, it's one of the most important parts of your case, because they're going to be trying to do a few things. They're going to be trying to elicit negative evidence through you, about you. They're going to be trying to punch holes in your testimony, your positive testimony from direct testimony, and they're going to be trying to discredit you. Okay. And being discredited in a court case, in any court case, can be a really big deal because what's happened, what happens is, is if it's done effectively, then you can ask the judge or your attorney can ask the judge basically to draw the inference that because a, a portion of their testimony was discredited, that most of the rest of the testimony should be discredited as well. And in custody cases, credibility is a big thing because a lot of it's like a he said, she said type thing. So if there's drastically, if you can prove that there's drastically uh, a drastic credibility difference, then it's big. Okay. So I just want to hit on it really quick. First off, during cross-examination, uh, cross-examination is the only portion in the trial or the hearing, evidentiary hearing, where you can use leading questions. Okay. You can't use leading questions on direct testimony. All right. I'll tell you uh, basically what I mean by that. So say that, um, say that I got this black track jacket on, right? Say that you're trying to elicit testimony that the track jacket is black. Okay. Say that that's a important point in the case. A, a, a non-leading question would be what color was the track jacket? And the answer would be the, the, you know, the track jacket was black or it was black. A leading question would be the track, the track jacket was correct or the track jacket was black, correct? Or the track jacket was black. Isn't that correct? Or the track jacket was black, right? That's the difference between leading and, and non-leading questions. Cross-examination is the only portion in the trial where you can use leading questions. You cannot use leading questions on direct testimony. So you cannot use leading questions with your own witness, right? So your attorney is not going to be able to put you on the stand and say, I mean, they wouldn't say this anyway, but they're not going to put you on the stand and say, you're a great parent, right? They have to ask you a question, a non-leading question. Otherwise, it's objectionable. So when you're on the stand, regardless of if you have an attorney or not, that other attorney is going to be slamming leading questions down your throat, right? You testified to this on direct, right? Well, what about this, right? Well, this happened, didn't it? Yes. Well, you sent him an email uh, on, you know, June 23rd of 2020, where you said this, isn't that correct? You know, and then they're going to have that evidence ready to, to if, you, if you say no, or you say, I don't know, then they're going to have that evidence ready. That's basically the whole point of it in a, in a quick nutshell, right? So when you're asking it, if you're, if you're pro se and you're asking the questioning, then you want to do the same thing. You want to lead, you want to lead the SOBs into every answer. Okay. But you have to be right about it. If you're right about it and they answer incorrectly, then you need to have the evidence, not just like you can't, if you're pro se, you can't just like say, well, the track jacket was black, correct. And they say, no, it was red. You can't just be like, no, it wasn't. It was black. No, it was red. No, no, it was black. No, 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 it was red. No, no, the, the judge is going to tell you both to shut up and will probably tell you to leave the courtroom. It would be the track jacket was black, correct? No, it was red. Go over, you get your photo of the track jacket being black. Follow the rules of my program then of presenting physical evidence, right? Grab the photo, show a copy of it to opposing counsel. Your honor, may I approach the witness? Walk up to them. Can you take a look at this document for me? Yes, I can. What is it? It's a picture of the track jacket. Or it would be, do you recognize it? That's laying the foundation. Take a look at this. Do you recognize it? Yes, I do. The foundation is laid because now he has firsthand knowledge, right? What is it? It's a picture of the track jacket authentication. Okay, now the court knows that it is what it's purported to be. Can you tell me what, do you recognize the color in that picture? Uh, yes, I do. What color is that? It's black. Oh, so let me ask you again. The track jacket was black, correct? Yeah, it was black. Then when on direct examination, why did you say it was red? Were you lying or did you just not have your story straight? Which is it? You see how that happens? Um, and obviously that, that's a simplified version, but you can do that for every piece of evidence. And if you're not pro se, be ready because that's the type of shit that's going to happen to you if the attorney knows anything about cross-examination when you're on the stand, right? So the best thing to do in cross-examination is just to answer honestly 
I mean, the, obviously the best thing to do ever is answer honestly, but in cross-examination, the best way to avoid problems is answer honestly. And if you don't know the honest question, just tell them you don't know, or I can't recall, or, you know, I can't, and if they give you shit about it, just be like, your honor, I'm really sorry. I, I really don't know. Okay. So that's what I wanted to talk about. That's a pretty quick uh, expert version of cross-examination. That's information that, you know, some, some attorneys might not even know.